Everyone is wrong about iOS 17. Except for us. So many people are saying this is a small update, but we found tons of great features, settings, and secrets that you'll actually use. Let's dive in, starting with a really cool new feature called Name Drop. With Name Drop, you can quickly share your contact information by bringing your iPhone near someone else's. It's a really cool animation. This feature also works with one iPhone and one Apple Watch. That's a really neat contact poster you have there. How'd you set that up? On your contact page, tap edit in the upper right hand corner of the screen, then tap edit below this contact poster. It's a lot like setting up a customizable lock screen, which is introduced with iOS 16. If I come all the way to the right, I can create a new contact poster. I'll tap create new, and then we can do a photo. We can do a Memoji. Let's pick my face. What pose should I pick here? How about one where I'm sticking my tongue out like that? We'll tap next. <laughs> I'll just tap done, upper right hand corner of the screen, tap continue. <laughs> the, uh, it's the, a little creepy at this point. The cropping leaves a little bit to be desired, but let's choose, <laughs> let's choose that. <laughs> then we'll tap done, tap update. <laughs> ah! You can come in here. There are a lot of customizable options in contact posters. Do you think people will abuse this feature? I, I hope not. No. Next up, a new pronouns field in contacts. When you add a new contact on your iPhone, you can now set their preferred pronouns. Next up, a new feature that brings me back to the happy days of my childhood. Let's open the settings app, scroll down and tap on phone, then scroll down and tap on live voicemail. First, turn on this new live voicemail switch. Live voicemail shows you a transcript of what the person who's leaving you a voicemail is saying in real time, so you can choose whether or not to pick up the phone call, just like an old answering machine. Get ready for people who call you to be a little confused because there's a new message that plays that kind of lets them know you might be screening their calls. But I'm more of a texter, that's why I'm really excited about all the new features coming to messages. First, let's tap back, upper left-hand corner of the screen, back to the main page of settings. One below phone is messages, tap on that. The first thing we're gonna tap on is iMessage apps. Warning, if you tap the red minus button next to one of these apps, it doesn't just remove the iMessage app version of it, it removes the entire app from your phone. These are the apps that live in the Messages app and there's a brand new plus button with iOS 17. Let's check it out. In Messages, there used to be a bar of icons here. It was messy. Apple said, to hell with that. We're gonna add this new plus button and if you tap on that, here is where all your apps live. If you don't see them at first, you can tap this more button at the bottom of the screen, and here they are. This is where I thought we could remove the apps, but in the previous tip, we talked about that minus button in settings. At this point, is there any way to remove just the iMessage version of an app? Not yet, and I hope that by the time Apple releases iOS 17 publicly, this September, we'll be able to both remove iMessage apps and reorder how they appear in the plus button. Let's talk about some of the new features in iMessage. First, if we tap on stickers, there's a new stickers drawer. Much easier to use than the old one. All emojis are now stickers. It's, it's actually emoji, David. At the event, Apple said emoji. With iOS 16, Apple introduced the ability to pull something out of the foreground of an image. Now you can take that a step further by turning those into stickers. And if you press and hold on one of your live stickers, you can add an effect to it. The one that I really like is the comic. And stickers can now be accessed in any app where you can also access emoji. You can also now react to messages using stickers and stick them anywhere on the message, which I think is amazing. That's enough about stickers. Let's talk about search within the messages app. When you start a search within messages, you can add additional terms to get more specific and narrow down your search. Who deletes their messages? Me, after every 30 days, that's a great iPhone storage tip. Well, I don't. So any improvement to the search function and messages is really gonna save me some time because sometimes I'm scrolling back forever. There's also a new feature called catch up. Yummy. In your group chats, you can tap the new arrow to jump right to the last message you haven't seen. And it doesn't even leave a stain. This has been a feature of a lot of messaging apps for a while now, so good on Apple for finally catching up. Now, swipe to reply makes it a lot easier and faster to reply to a specific message. 
iOS 17 also introduced audio message transcription. When somebody sends you an audio message, that'll be transcribed in the Messages app so you can just read it. Next up, a feature Apple calls inline location. You can keep track of a contact's location directly from the Messages app. It's kind of a cool feature. To share your location with someone, tap the plus button in Messages, then tap location, then tap share. Next feature we're gonna check out is check in. This new feature allows you to let someone know that you've made it home or somewhere else safely. Let's say I'm a parent and I want my kid to check in at grandma's house at 9 p.m. So I choose the location, I choose the time. What if they don't check in? Your iPhone will prompt you if you don't arrive as expected. And if you don't respond to that prompt, your iPhone will notify the person you're using check-in with and share the data you've selected. Let's show you how it works. First, I'll tap the plus button in a messages app and then tap more to go down. And then we have this new check-in app. I'll tap on that. Let your friend know you've arrived with chicken. Your friend will be notified automatically when you get to your destination. All right, continue. iPhone will keep up with your progress. If you aren't making progress toward your destination, you'll be prompted and have 15 minutes to respond. Imagine getting pulled over and- I need to check in. I need to check in. The officer's like, you can't use your phone. Yeah, choose the data you'd like to share if you don't arrive. If you don't arrive as expected, iPhone will prompt you. If you don't respond, iPhone will notify your friend and share the data you've chosen. Show example. This is an example of data that will be shared if you don't respond when prompted. If it's limited, they'll see that my iPhone is here. If it's full, they'll see the whole route. I mean, that's pretty cool. I'll tap full because I want David to see everything. Your friend is notified when you send the check-in, you arrive, or if you're delayed and don't respond when prompted, send a check-in. One thing to keep in mind with check-in is that it does require significant locations to be enabled. And if you've ever watched this channel before, that's one of the settings we always tell you to turn off. So why? You have to make a choice. Why isn't there just a separate check-in system service? There's for everything else. That'd be great. Mm -hmm. To send that check-in, you would just tap the send button like you're sending any other message on your iPhone. These next two new features work in any app with the keyboard, but we're gonna demo them in messages. First off, improved autocorrect. Apple says autocorrect now uses a transformer language model to improve autocorrect as you type. And it's interesting that they didn't say AI because it's AI, but they're not saying that. Unlike Google, which said the word AI 17 times during their most recent event. This model runs every single time you tap a key on the keyboard. I was also surprised that Apple slipped in a, a ducking joke into WWDC. Oh, Craig. Everybody loves Craig Federighi. The other new keyboard feature is inline predictive text. This essentially lets your iPhone write your sentences for you. I personally don't use it because I like to write my own gosh darn sentences, but I guess some people would. Predictive text now appears in line as you type and you can just tap that space bar to fill in what Apple thinks you want to write. Let's move from messages to FaceTime. There are several great new features. Let's start with FaceTime messages. The answering machine is back again, sort of. So I called David with FaceTime. He doesn't pick up as usual. So it says, do I want to leave a message for him? Which I can then do and actually leave a video answering machine message. It's called a FaceTime message. Exactly. Apple has also brought FaceTime to Apple TV, allowing you to take your FaceTime calls on a much bigger screen. You can even use an older iPhone to do this as long as it's signed into your Apple ID. So sorry kids, you're not getting last year's hand down. However, you do need an Apple TV 4K. This works better with a MagSafe stand than just setting it up against your soundbar, which is what I was doing, because it'll just fall <laughs> or, over. Or the base of your TV, like 95% of our viewers. <laughs> so this is a MagSafe stand, like this Belkin one, works well. Apple has also added video gestures to FaceTime. So if you do a double thumbs up, for example, fireworks will go off. We haven't gotten it to work yet, but it's coming. Are you one of those people who likes to take pictures and videos of fireworks? No. Me either. I think they all look the same. Fortunately, whether you like taking boring pictures of fireworks or not, there are a ton of great new features in the Photos app that everyone can enjoy. Like visual lookup in videos. That's cool. Apple introduced visual lookup in iOS 16 to help us identify landmarks and animals and a whole bunch of different stuff. Now it works in videos too. Just pause the video, press and hold on what you want to look up, and then tap look up. And now you can take a picture of your food and get a recipe for that. Just tap the 
knife and fork food icon at the bottom and then tap look up food. Let's see what it comes up with. Easy Eggs Benedict with pea meal bacon close. This is Eggs Benedict on a authentic Belgian waffle in Belgium. And this works in photos too, where you can quickly look up the subject of an image, especially if it doesn't happen automatically, press and hold on it, and then tap look up. The People album in photos is now People and Pets, and you can name your pets. From photos that you want to see to photos that you probably don't wanna see, let's talk about some of the new privacy settings on iPhone. The first is a new feature called Sensitive Content Warning. In the Settings app, if we tap Privacy and Security, scroll down, there's this new Sensitive Content Warning field. Let's tap on that. When this is on, your iPhone detects nudity in photos and videos before you see it, and then gives you guidance on how to make a safe choice. You might be sitting there thinking, is Apple looking at all the risque photos I'm sending back and forth? Answer, no. Apple has seen so many of those kinds of photos and videos that they've developed on-device machine learning, or more AI, that could detect it. Would have been an interesting job, wouldn't it? Mm. One new feature that I've been really impressed with ever since I installed iOS 17 on my phone are these new pop-ups that remind you when an app has access to all the photos on your iPhone and it says, hey, they've been having this access for six months. Do you really want them to still have that access? It's especially useful for those of us that when we get a new app, we just allow it to have access to everything on our iPhone. And to really hammer this point home and how important it is, Apple has added a somewhat useful full photo library access section to the privacy section of settings. So when you choose to allow all photos, you know what you're signing up for. In this section of settings, unfortunately, you can't tap on it or anything, but I do think it's helpful to know that certain apps would have access to 9,600 photos on my iPhone. Right, so you open the app, the app has access to it. It means that it could theoretically send it to their servers, which is what TikTok does. They call it pre-uploading. Apple has also changed up some of the terminology in this section of settings. So if I tap on Facebook, for example, we have full access, limited access, or none. That would be no access. Apple has also made calendar invites more secure. You can now allow apps to add calendar events without also being able to view all your other information and appointments. Apple has also expanded lockdown modes. We tap back to the main privacy and security page, scroll down, and tap on lockdown mode at the bottom of the screen. Apple just calls it expanded lockdown mode, and they say it increases your security, and it also works across all your Apple devices, including Apple Watch. And there's also a new system service that is a little bit sketchy. So if we tap into location services, and then scroll all the way down to system services, we have this new micro location system service. Why do I care about where micro is? It's micro, like small, M-I-C-R-O. Oh, okay. What does it do? We don't know. I mean, first thought for me is that it's like a more intense location. I don't know. Yeah, it's interesting. It is vague about what this is gonna be used for. They talk about micro location a lot with advertising targeting, like if I'm a hospital and I want to get new nurses, I could target another hospital's parking lot and then send those nurses ads to get them to work for me. Is that related to this? That being said, this system service might be gone by the time iOS 17 launches. In beta one, there was an app clips location confirmation system service, which has now been removed. So don't be surprised if micro location is not there when iOS 17 goes public. This just sounds like if you turn it off, you're gonna be safer to me. I I'm gonna turn it off right now. I'm kind of scared of it and what the battery implications could be as I'm using the beta. Next up, a feature that many of you wish that we had, the ability to slow down how fast we speak. They do have that feature. It's called changing the playback speed in YouTube. Okay, that's true. What about Siri though? There's a new dedicated Siri speaking rate section that allows you to speed up or slow down Siri. So in the settings app, if we tap accessibility and then scroll down to Siri, tap on that, we have this new speaking rate slider. You can make it as fast as 200%, which would be twice as fast or as slow as 80%. Next, a new way to hang up the phone. You can now say, hey Siri, hang up during phone calls and FaceTime calls. To do this, you must first scroll down in the settings, accessibility Siri, tap on call hang up, and turn on the switch. I don't know about you, but I'm not relying on Siri to hang up my phone calls. There are some crazy new Siri settings we need to check out, and they're in the Siri section of settings. A lot of alliteration there. I'll tap back to the main page of settings, then 
scroll down to Siri and search, tap on that. The first is a new way to communicate with Siri. If you tap on listen for at the top of the screen, you can now just say Siri instead of hey Siri. Now I can say Siri, what's the weather? There we go. Now maybe you are a baseball player named Jose Siri and you don't want to have it just activate when you say Siri. You can come in here and just select Hey Siri. What's interesting to me is that the Beats Studio Buds Plus and other new earbuds, you still need to say Hey Siri because this is like built into the phone. Also new to Siri is back-to-back -back requests. So now you can say Hey Siri, what's the weather tomorrow? And then if it's good for golf, you can say set my alarm for 5 a.m instead of having to say Siri again. And Siri is now available for requests during FaceTime and phone calls. If we tap back to Siri and search in the upper left hand corner of the screen, there's this new Siri in calls option. You can tap on that and turn on the switch. So maybe you're on a phone call with someone and they ask you a question, you don't know the answer to it and you leverage your Siri tools to give them a maybe correct, possibly incorrect answer to their question. And in our Siri and search settings, if we scroll down, there's this new reset hidden suggestions option. For example, if you had a dating app that you didn't wanna show up as a Siri suggestion on your iPhone, you could come down here, tap on the app, and then turn off the switches underneath suggestions. The reset hidden suggestions button will turn all this back on. And a really cool new feature for Apple Watch users, kind of the reverse of the ping my iPhone from Apple Watch. Lots of people, ourselves included, wanted to see some big changes to Control Center. And unfortunately this one new control was pretty much the start and end of it. So step one is to actually add the ping my watch control to control center on your iPhone. So if we scroll up and tap on control center and then scroll down to this new ping my watch option, I'll tap the green plus button. And then if I open control center by swiping down from the upper right hand corner of the screen, there's the new ping my watch button. I can press that. And Apple has also given you the ability to customize what's in the hearing control and control center. To do this, we can tap back to the main page of settings, scroll down and tap on accessibility, and then scroll down to hearing control center, and we get headphone accommodations, background sounds, a live listen. Maybe I wanna add conversation boost to my hearing control, so I can tap that green plus button. And now if we open control center again and tap on the hearing control, it's laid out like this. I do think the layout of the hearing control is a lot nicer in iOS 17. We're nearing the halfway point of this video, so it's time for us to ask you to join this channel. Channel members get a whole bunch of perks like PDFs for some of our biggest settings videos. And when iOS 17 comes out, we'll be doing battery tips, settings to turn off, settings to turn on. Members are gonna get PDFs for all of those videos click that join button below this video to become a channel member today. Let's rapid fire some of these new changes. There's a new display and brightness icon in the settings app. Whoa. And there are new icons for the Apple ID settings. Apple has built in a new communication preferences section that makes it even more difficult to unsubscribe from the Apple News newsletter. In your iCloud settings, there's a new recommended for you section, which tells you more about iCloud Plus, gives you some storage tips and more. In the iPhone storage section of settings, you can now sort by name or the date you last used a specific app, which can be super helpful if you're looking for apps to uninstall. In your cellular settings, you can now sort apps by name instead of by usage. Not sure how useful that is. If you have the best unlimited data plan in the world and you're sick of looking at these statistics, I mean, who isn't? You can now disable cellular usage statistics. You can now securely sign into your iPhone with a nearby device or any email address or phone number associated with your account. Some minor changes in the weather app, like it says my location at the top now for the one that's in your location instead of just the name of your location. iOS 17 adds daily crossword puzzles to the Apple News app, but only for News Plus subscribers. iOS 17 also adds a new native app called Journal, which will allow you to reflect on the day. The Journal app creates an entry every day for you with 
activities that you've done and photos that you've taken and then makes it easy for you to kind of fill in the blanks, I think. That's the impression I get anyway. It's not out yet. We'd love to demo it for you, but if you don't want to miss any of our iOS 17 videos, Whoa. hit that big subscribe button below this video. In the settings app, the home screen section of settings is no longer home screen. It's home screen and app library. There isn't anything new here at the moment, but I'm cautiously optimistic Apple's gonna give us some control over our app library, which is something I asked for in our iOS 17 wishlist video. There are two new wallet features we're excited about. The first is recurring payments in the wallet app. If you tap on Apple Cash and tap the three dots in the upper right hand corner of the screen, there is this new recurring payments field. Maybe you wanna pay rent monthly through Apple Cash. I'm not sure how many people are doing that, but if you've got recurring payments that you pay through Apple Cash, this is a great way to do it. And businesses will soon be able to accept digital IDs. It's currently only available in a handful of states, New York not being one of them, so we can't demo this. Hopefully that's coming soon. The next feature was announced alongside my favorite WWDC moment, multiple timers. And here's what Craig Federighi had to say about it. We truly live in an age of wonders. In the clock app on your iPhone, you can finally do multiple timers. It's about darn time. And app shortcuts are now appearing in top hit. For example, if you type in photos, you could open the photos app or you could jump straight to your favorites album, photos from one year ago or your recents album. Tough to top that. That rapid fire section has me feeling a little bit burnt out. Why don't we talk about some of the cool new health app features introduced in iOS 17? I haven't used this yet, but it's already my favorite part of the health app and it's mental well being. I'll open the health app and then tap the browse tab at the bottom of the screen and we have this new mental well being section. The first thing we're going to talk about is state of mind. So I'll tap on that on my iPhone and then I'll tap log in the upper right hand corner of the screen. This allows you to log an emotion or a mood. So emotion, how you're feeling right now or mood, how you felt overall today. So I'm gonna log an emotion, I'll tap next. And you can drag the slider right if you're feeling very pleasant or to the left if you're feeling very unpleasant. I like that animation. I feel like that animation already makes you feel more pleasant. So I'm gonna go slightly above Neutral. I try to keep myself in the four to six range. Let's tap that next button at the bottom of the screen. What best describes this feeling? I'm gonna do content, or in our case, content. <laughs> then tap next at the bottom of the screen. What's having the biggest impact on you right now? Well, all I've done today is work, so Boss. I'm gonna select work. Yeah. And if we scroll down, we can add additional context. I'm not gonna do that, I guess I could do video recording. I'll tap done at the bottom of the screen and now that emotion has been logged. Now I think that you should be able to do this for other people. You should be able to add other people to it and be like, yeah. how annoying has this person been today? Yeah, or you, you, could, you could give them your report card at the end of the day. Or you could just gaslight them using that feature. You're making me feel this way. Yeah. Is that what you mean? Yeah, like, oh, you don't feel this way, you feel like this. Exactly, right, you were actually, you know you were wrong, you yeah. were happy. Yeah. I have the data. Speaking of having the data, you can tap on that summary tab in the lower left hand corner of the screen, then tap show all health data, and then tap state of mind to get right back to where we were. But if you were just opening the health app for the first time, this is where you could view your state of mind data. The next thing we wanna talk about are standardized health assessments. So if we head back to the browse tab in the health app, and then tap back, we have this new anxiety risk, depression risks, we can just tap on anxiety risk, and there's this new anxiety risk questionnaire. If we tap on that, answer a handful of questions that are asked in clinics to help you determine whether or not you have anxiety. I'm not gonna fill it out right now because just thinking about filling this out makes me anxious, yeah. so I'm not gonna do it. What if you get it wrong? Yeah. Hmm. There's also a great new feature for Apple Watch users. If we tap back out of anxiety risk and scroll down to time and daylight, your Apple Watch can use its sensors to figure out how long you're in daylight. Can it give me sunscreen too? Because uh, I don't think unless so. it's gonna shoot out sunscreen, this is gonna be a low number for me. Unfortunately, this is a Watch OS 10 feature. I'm not running the Watch OS 10 beta, so I've got no information to show here. This next feature is designed with your health in mind too. 
or at least in your face. It's called screen distance and your iPhone can use its sensors to tell when you've been holding your phone too close to your face for an extended period of time. You can turn on screen distance in the iPhone settings app by tapping screen time, then tapping screen distance and turning on the switch next to screen distance. I was using this yesterday and it didn't really pick it up at first. It takes a little while, but once it detects that your phone has been too close to your face for too long, it's like constant constant screen distance reminders. Right, so a lot of people that might have vision problems, for instance, might be looking at their phones like this, and that's not helping your vision. You should just go into accessibility, it's gonna say, and make the text bigger, which you can do. There are some smaller changes to screen time too. If we tap back in the upper left-hand corner of the screen, there's this new app and website activity section, and that is where your downtime and your app limits are going to live. Apple has also made communication safety appear on the main screen time page. And this is where check for sensitive photos live. It's a setting that can help you detect nude photos in the messages app. Well, I think we've talked about nude photos enough in right. this video. Fair Let's enough. talk about all the exciting changes coming to Safari in iOS 17. If we tap back to the main page of settings, scroll down and tap Safari, you can now select your private search engine by default that's gonna match your default search engine, which for me is Google, but you could also switch it to Bing or DuckDuckGo. I Go. thought we weren't gonna talk about nude photos anymore. I, well. Safari has also added profiles. You can select bookmarks and favorites for different profiles. To switch between profiles in Safari, you just come into the tabs page, tap on the list button at the bottom of the screen, and then here you have your profile. Right now I'm on no profile, but you could do work or you could do school. That makes sense, I like it. How do we set up a profile? Well, if we tap back to our Safari settings page and then scroll down to profiles, I got my work profile, my school profile, we can just tap new profile and maybe I wanna do, I don't know, I have my rocket profile. This is for my stocks, I guess, I don't know. And we'll make it green for money and we'll tap done, and here's where I'd add my Charles Schwab and my Fidelity accounts and all my favorite stock websites. Feature I love is that you need to use Face ID now to unlock private browsing. In Safari settings, make sure this switch is turned on next to require Face ID to unlock private browsing, and then when you're in a private browsing tab, you close out of it, you have to use your Face ID to get back in. Next up, advanced tracking and fingerprint protection. In our Safari settings, if we scroll down to advanced and tap on that, there's this new advanced tracking and fingerprint protection section. If we tap on that, we can select off in private browsing or all browsing. It is set to private browsing by default. I don't know why you wouldn't want it on all browsing. Maybe it'll block some cookies. I don't know. Fingerprinting is not actual fingerprints now that I'm looking at this setting. It's actually the digital fingerprint that you leave behind because they're gonna find out things about you, like your location generally from your IP address and the size of your device, et cetera, et cetera. I would turn it on for all browsing and if yeah, websites- Yeah, see, see if it breaks. If websites start to break, come back in here and choose private browsing. Apple has also improved search in Safari. They say that it's now more responsive than ever and shows easier to read and more relevant suggestions. Next up, a change in the way iCloud Private Relay works when you're using private browsing. So. Normally you might choose to have iCloud Private Relay show websites your general location. Now for private browsing, it's gonna show just your country and your time zones. It's even privater. There's also a brand new Safari widget allowing you to add your reading list to the home screen. So if I press and hold on my home screen and tap the plus button on the upper left-hand corner of the screen, I can scroll down to Safari. Where is it? There it is. Oh, that's not it to Safari, we've got our small reading list, we've got our medium reading list, and we have our five article reading list. Let's tap add widget and tap done. You can now pause and play music or podcasts, access home controls, and complete a to-do list in reminders. And speaking of the reminders widget, let's talk about some cool new changes coming to reminders. The first thing I'm going to do is open the settings app, and we have a new option in here Reset grocery categories. iOS 17 introduces grocery categories to the Reminders app, and here is where you would reset them. Apple is really leading into this grocery list idea for the Reminders app. They said, all right, you're gonna use Reminders for grocery list? Well, watch this. We're gonna build in some new features. We probably should show them how to actually create those grocery lists before they reset them. So I'll close out of settings, 
come over to my app library and find reminders. I'm going to add a list and in your list type, make sure to select groceries. And then I'm just gonna add grocery as the list name. And I'll tap done in the upper right hand corner of the screen. So now let's start adding some items. And this is really cool. If I tap new item and I want carrots, I wanna type better carrots. <laughs> it's so, such better autocorrect. And wow. I've got peas and see it's already filling in produce there, but maybe I want a steak. Okay, that's a meat. Now maybe I want muffin. Muffins, I mean more than one muffin. And it's got breads and cereals. So as you can see, it's really intelligent. David alluded to the new home app widget before, but I love this new feature even more, especially the home integration part of it. And it is standby. Standby shows information like widgets, a photo frame, or a clock when your iPhone is stationary in landscape mode and connected to a power source. So you need a stand like this. Like a Belkin stand. Like that one right there. You can buy this, link in the description. And there are a couple settings for this we wanna talk about in the new standby section of settings. In the settings app on my iPhone, I'll scroll down and tap on standby. So for it to work, the standby switch does need to be turned on. I really recommend leaving on always on. When always on is enabled, the display will intelligently turn off when not in use. When attention is detected, iPhone will not sleep the display. One other thing we wanna show you with standby is night mode. This is really cool when you turn on night mode it makes everything really red, looks cool, I love it. Right. So when the night is young and the land is dark, now your iPhone is the only light you'll see. If you've watched our videos before, you know that you should turn on two-factor authentication for any account you can. Unfortunately, this leads to a lot of clutter in the Messages app with all of those two-factor verification codes. Apple with iOS 17 is helping us out. They are cleaning this up in the passwords section of settings. If you tap on password options, there's this new clean up automatically switch underneath verification codes. I strongly recommend turning that on if you get a lot of verification codes through the messages app. Yeah, the autofill feature that they introduced before is a lifesaver. And Apple has also brought verification codes to mail. Or at least the ability to autofill them from mail, which is another good feature. And there's one more iOS 17 setting in the password section of settings. If we tap back to passwords, we have this new share passwords and pass keys section. If we tap get started, you can create a group to share your passwords and pass keys across devices. Maybe you wanna share your Netflix account. I guess you can't do that anymore. Here's how you can do it a lot easier. Apple took the most popular girl in high school approach to this, where the person who creates the group can also add or remove members from it whenever they want to. Let's get one thing straight. This is not a chirocracy. I am the cheer tater. If you wanna be that popular girl, what you would do is tap continue and then add the people <laughs> to your I account. I, yeah, my, I <laughs> my contact poster is still in there. <laughs> and speaking of passwords, let's talk about a new face ID and passcode setting, which can really come in handy. If we tap back to the main page of settings, and then tap face ID and passcode, I'll enter my passcode. And if we scroll down, there's this new expire previous passcode now option. This is cool. If you change your passcode and you forget the new passcode, now you can use your old passcode for up to 72 hours to reset the new one again, which as a former Apple Store employee, you realize that half the tech support questions are either I forgot my password or I forgot my passcode. So this is really a great feature. If you were to change the passcode on your iPhone, this expire previous passcode now would turn blue and you could just skip that 72 hour period and change it immediately. Right, because maybe you changed it because your co-host got your password and is now prank calling all your friends. But you don't want him to be able to continue to do that. Next, let's talk about a new iOS 17 feature that has actually existed in other apps for years, it is offline maps. In the Maps app, when you select a destination, I'll just type in a Statue of Liberty. We can tap on this More button, and then it says Download Map. Why don't you make the map bigger? I mean, you can really... I mean, is how big is this map gonna be? You can get like all of New York and Aren't available, well, this is not available for uh, this region. How, how, so get There like, you go, I can get that much. How, how much is it? 
4.5 gigabytes. That's a lot. Yeah. Really useful if you don't have a cellular data plan, you want to download the map on Wi-Fi and then use it, or you can just use Google Maps. Well, for you, living up in the mountains, mountain region, mm -hmm. what if David got lost on the way home? There's no maps. There's no cell service for half yeah. the time, right? What percentage of the time do you have good cell service on your drive home? Uh, I mean, there's like a, maybe like a 45 minute period between Keene and like exit 28 on the North Way. Yep, that you don't so have that's it. like, I don't know, that's like half an hour. So sorry, Apple, you'll have to do more than that to get me to switch from Google Maps. But one thing I'll never do is switch away from the native iPhone camera and iOS 17 introduces a great new feature that makes it even better. I just used it the other day when I was in Colorado and taking pictures of these beautiful mountain ranges. It's a new level feature right in the camera app. And another native iOS app got a big upgrade, Freeform. Apple is adding a watercolor brush, calligraphy pen, highlighter, variable width pen, and a ruler to Freeform, an app that I have used once. It's really cool though, have you used it? I know. No. <laughs> it's, it's cool for collaborating. Yeah. And I think if you're artistically inclined. I'm not artistic, I'm all business, which is why I really like these two new features coming to the Notes app. The Notes app now allows you to place PDFs directly in Notes and do things like markup and collaborate with other local users. You can also now link Notes to sections of a PDF natively in the Notes app. This is awesome. As long as you and all your friends in high school can afford iPad Pros, and Apple pencils, all that stuff, you're good to go. And you can now use your contact information to autofill in fields and PDFs. I was toying around with this earlier. It gets your name perfectly. One thing that I really love is that it can recognize the signature field. So when you tap into the signature field, all of your saved digital signatures show up and you can just choose it, it's amazing. Watch out audio engineers. Apple's coming for you with our next new feature, Crossfade. When you open settings and scroll down to music, then scroll down, there's this new crossfade switch and a new crossfade slider, which you can use to set the duration of your crossfade. Doesn't work yet, we tried it out. If you hate silence between songs you're listening to and wanna fade one into the next, this is gonna be interesting to listen to. Next up, a new AirPods feature called Adaptive Audio, which kind of lives in between noise cancellation and transparency mode. Apple calls it the best of both, but we think it's really more like the worst of both. It's kind of like a, a toned down transparency mode, but on AirPods Pro second gen, when noise cancellation is on, it really doesn't have white noise. You can't hear anything. It does a pretty good job. But then this transparency mode, I don't know, it's just weird. My favorite part of this feature is the icon. Yeah. When you turn it on. You can toggle it on and off in the settings app or in control center. AirPods also got personalized volume. Using machine learning, your iPhone learns from your listening habits and preferences combined with your surroundings to deliver an improved and personalized listening experience. Again, you can toggle this on or off in the settings app on your iPhone. And conversation awareness, which turns down your music when you start talking to somebody or they start talking to you. Just keep in mind that this feature specifically only works on AirPods Pro. But it's not just the audio in your ears. iOS 17 introduces an awesome new feature to CarPlay. Stop passing that lightning cable around. When an iPhone running iOS 17 is connected to CarPlay, other users can join that session using SharePlay and, and change the song that's being played. Fortunately, it's easy to regain control of your audio system. Works pretty well. AirPlay is getting an upgrade to AirPlay in hotels. I just got back from vacation and I was surprised that at both hotels I stayed at, you could use your phone to wirelessly cast using Google's Chromecast to the TV, which was super helpful. Now Apple is copying that feature. A QR code will appear on the television in a hotel that supports this feature, allowing you to quickly and easily connect. There is now AirDrop over the internet. That's true, coming to iOS 17. You have to start it when you're in range of somebody else because I wanna be able to send David, let's say a file, all the way up to the mountains. So I guess we can do that now, David, as long as you drive here and we start the transfer, yep. then you can drive home and it'll finish. There's gotta be a more convenient way. Speaking of SharePlay, you can now initiate SharePlay using AirDrop. Bringing two iPhones together will initiate SharePlay. Now you might be wondering, what else does iOS 17 let me share? Well. 
there is a redesigned sharing section in the fitness app. So in the fitness app, we have this sharing tab. You can tap on that. Somebody is trying to share their fitness information with me. I don't recognize their email. It's kind of weird. I that is really weird. It's really? Little, yeah, I don't know who it is. I don't want to dox them, but you can share your activity, invite a friend, and yeah, start sharing your fitness information with them. In the Find My app, you can also share an AirTag or other Find My accessory with up to five people. Everyone the accessory is shared with can play a sound and use precision finding. And if you hate sharing or communicating with anyone, there's a new focus setting that we know you'll love. In the settings app on your iPhone, tap focus and then choose any of these focuses. I'll pick do not disturb. And then if we tap options, we have this new silence notifications. We can choose always, or we can choose while locked. This allows you to silence incoming calls and notifications when your iPhone is locked or unlocked. Apple also built in activity history to the home app, which allows you to see who locked or unlocked a door, for instance, or different zones that might've been triggered on your home security system. It's all very high tech. iOS 17 introduces a ton of new accessibility features and settings. The first is called animated images. In the settings app on my iPhone, I'll scroll down to accessibility, tap on that, then tap motion, and we have this new animated images switch, which controls whether images animate on the web or in apps. So say bye-bye to all those fun GIFs or GIFs. Not gonna work anymore. I send a lot of reaction GIFs, so I'm gonna turn on animated images. It is on by default. The next feature is really amazing, and it's called personal voice. This feature allows you to create a synthesized voice that sounds just like you. It's designed for people who might be losing their ability to speak. It does take an hour to set up on your iPhone. You essentially just start reading prompts to your phone and after an hour, it can really build that synthetic voice for you. If you wanna set it up on your iPhone, tap back to the main accessibility page and then scroll down to personal voice and then tap create a personal voice. Freaky, we're getting into freaky land with technology. But this is a little bit less freaky. It's called live speech. So if I tap back to accessibility upper left-hand corner of the screen, then tap on live speech. First, turn on live speech. I'll triple click the side button, and now I can choose live speech. And as you start typing, your iPhone will start speaking. So I could say, hello, how are you? It's uh, not as nice as a synthetic voice, and for me, I might need to change off of Samantha because that doesn't sound totally like she me. She doesn't sound great. No. You could just make it Siri. You could. Yeah. You can also save and reuse commonly used phrases to make this process less terrible. iOS 17 brings power off and power on sounds to iPhone. Unfortunately, they're a bit disappointing. I was hoping for that sort of classic Apple sound. To turn these on, I'm first gonna turn off live speech and then tap back to accessibility in the upper left-hand corner of the screen. Then tap on audio visual and turn on the switch next to power on and off sounds. And there's another accessibility feature that Apple announced before WWDC. It's called assistive access and it gives you an alternative view of the iPhone home screen. This is a really cool feature for people who may have vision difficulties because it makes things really big and easy to use. You can choose the apps that'll appear in assistive access on your iPhone and whether they appear in a grid view or a list view. One thing to keep in mind if you are messing around with this feature, the way to get out of it is to triple click the side button. Otherwise, you're gonna be stuck in assistive access with no way out. Our next new feature came out while we were recording this video. Apple really timed that second beta update yeah, <laughs> perfectly for us. Too. Thank you. <laughs> let's tap it back in the upper left-hand corner of the screen and back to the main page of settings. If we tap on general and then tap software update, we have this brand new looking update interface with a fancier looking update now button. Yep, they hit uh, that center. This has been a marathon. If you are still watching this video, we really appreciate it. If you like us that much, click that join button below this video, become a channel member. It is the best way to support this channel and share this video with someone you know. It is a little bit frustrating when Apple releases brand new updates with some new features right in the middle of us recording these marathon videos. But fortunately, you were here, we got it up to date, and so now this video is super fresh. And now that you are an expert on iOS 17, learn about all the settings you need to turn off on your iPhone right now, we'll see you there.